Hey guys, this is Loic from Fanami and you're watching China 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 podcast. Yeah. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to a very special episode of uh, China 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 podcast. Yeah, we have a very special guest today joining all the way from uh, Beirut, Lebanon. We have Loic of uh, Fanami. Hi Loic. Hi. What's up man? How are you doing Loic? How's the Halloween? I'm fine. <laughs> It's good. Just started here. It's uh, just 10 a.m. in Beirut and uh, yeah. Nothing much yet. Right. So Loic, how's the situation in uh, Lebanon with this uh, pandemic and everything? Well, uh, in Lebanon it's a bit different because it's not just about the pandemic, it's about economical collapse and all that. Uh, since the Beirut explosion in August, right. so um, uh, everything is really down. You know, businesses are down, uh, economy is down. So yeah, it's not a good time to be in Lebanon right now. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Right. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, I, I mean, I remember back in the day, Lebanon. I mean, I heard about Lebanon. Uh, it was not very stable at. before right but there was a certain time where it was very peaceful as well right yeah yeah of course definitely uh usually lebanon is not it's not like media uh post it is not uh, always about war and stuff like that right it's a, it's a really great country we have uh, cool gigs and everything is smooth but lately it's been really everything is going down because of you know economic uh, problems and uh, stuff that been accumulated through time so yeah now we're paying the price of that right <clears throat> yeah because i can imagine because i'm actually originally from sri lanka as well so yeah. we had like you know we had like a 30 year civil war and all these economic problems and uh, the politicians yeah. you know oh, yeah. i don't know they're not really <laughs> working for the people they just <laughs> yeah definitely Another thing is even in Lebanon even people can't get their own money from the banks so wow. everyone who has uh, yeah yeah american currency they cannot use it so yeah everyone is is searching for a solution for that but yeah it's it's really really bad right right now <clears throat> so like can you can, uh, can you tell me little bit about your like childhood and then how do you like got into playing music yeah sure when i was a child i i wasn't really into music you know i was i, I was born in an african country in ivory coast so uh you know the music there is almost r&b uh, stuff like that reggae you know right. i wasn't really into that when i came to lebanon there was this <laughs> this music uh, courses that we needed to take at school it was obligatory and i really didn't know anything about it so the teacher comes and says what's that note and i was like i don't know man i don't know what what is that so he gets angry and he attacks me for that so uh, for a while i hated music and everything that is related to that until you know i was really into um uh, wrestling and stuff like that you know WWE and right. WCW back then so i was uh, switching channels and stuff like that i was in my room and uh, uh this band comes out on MTV and it was a huge stage and you know i was like and i was listening to this song i was like i know this song and it was uh Sting's theme song Seek and Destroy by Metallica and they were playing it live and i was I could now relate the two words you know so this is exactly when it started for me right. but uh, yeah after that you know a friend got us CDs and we got introduced to Metallica more to Iron Maiden Judas Priest all these guys so yeah this is when it really started for me I was about uh, it was in 2003 so I was about 11 10 11 right Yeah I mean yeah. growing up WWE was a big influence for like our generation right <laughs> Yeah really I think all of us know these bands because of either the video games or the pay-per-views Right I think uh, yeah <laughs> 
because I, I actually, I, I celebrated my birthday yesterday, right? So I actually got this uh, message from Hornswoggle, you know, the, the small wrestler. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he played, uh, sometime he was Vince McMahon's lost child, something like that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Vince <laughs> McMahon's the the leprechaun. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Happy birthday, by the way. Yeah, thank you. That made my day actually when I saw that message. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> did, did someone get it as a present for you, or? Yes, yes. My friend, I have a friend, Carlito. He 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 got a cameo cameo for me for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. It's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, from, from like seeing Metallica. So, how did you like? got into like playing guitar and then what sort of music did you like other other bands you discovered yeah so guitar it was i was in this school and everyone you know uh their parents put them in music schools or whatever so they had their own instruments they would they would come to you know uh holidays they, they would go and play together and stuff like that and one time this guy was playing the unforgiven on his guitar you know the simple stuff you were young you know so it was Da, 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 da. So it really got me, and I wanted to do that, to do the same thing. So I couldn't afford a guitar back then. So a friend of mine sold me his for a really cheap price, and I still tell him thank you, man. Uh, so um, yeah, I got this class. It was a classical guitar. It wasn't as cool as the other guys, you know. They had the electric guitar and stuff like that. But I started with it. And uh, bit by bit, I started, you know, uh, I got my first electric guitar, like uh, a year later. And this is when I really started, you know, I started by ear, you know, just listening stuff and trying to imitate them on guitar. Right. And uh, bit by bit, I started, you know, to enjoy more of the instruments to get what I really enjoy to play on this instrument. This is how it started. Right. <clears throat> uh Anybody was like you were taking lessons from anybody or anybody influenced you or for, for playing guitar? I tried. I tried for a, for a really, really small period, but it, it never worked out. You know, it, uh, I, I, I was never, I never took a full course lesson. So it was mainly uh, self-taught. Everything was self -taught. Right. So, uh, Loic, do you remember, like, what was your, like, first concert uh, or concert or gig that you went to or you, you see live? Some who, who did you see live? Yeah, there was this small uh, concert venue in Lebanon called uh, Nova. And they hosted, like, literally every a week or two a concert with local bands. Uh, I think this is the first time I went and see... Uh, a band live. Uh, I think it was a Lebanese band called uh, Blackium. Um, they were playing, you know, they had their original stuff and they played also Metallica stuff. They played, I think back then it was Am I Evil, uh, Diamond Head, I mean, uh, Am I Evil, and um, I think they played something like Seek and Destroy or I can't remember well, but yeah, it was that and there was also another venue where I watched a band called Element 26 and Thrash Storm and all these cool local Lebanese bands. Yeah, this, these were my first gigs. I, I witnessed was all uh, Lebanese local bands. Right. <clears throat> so uh, how did, the, because I see that in, in the Middle East, uh, there were suddenly there were bands coming up. There was Orphan Land from Israel and then there was... Uh, nerve cell from dubai and then there were other couple of bands and which you guys probably are sort of following uh, their footsteps so what are the bands that really like got you into into the scene the from the neighboring countries what bands did you really enjoy yeah the the funny thing is that rudy and i rudy is the drummer and uh, we started all together and it was we started learning the instruments together and uh, we grew up playing together and uh, we shared, you know, the riffs and stuff. So for us, it was like literally impossible to form a band. We didn't even know how it happened, how it worked. Yeah. So we were just going to gigs and, you know, they know how to do it. We just do our own things in our garage and this is how it's going to be. 
but um, later on we started playing our own stuff you know i was just coming up with riffs and he'd play you know drum patterns with it so uh, uh after that people started i don't remember who but they started telling us hey why don't you form a band and for us it was like are you crazy how how how, how, how do we start a band we, we have no idea yeah. so we started asking friends hey, do you know anyone who sings do you know you know so uh after that uh we got hooked with some friends who could you know scream and do stuff anything you know right. and the scene in lebanon was really going downhill you know the bands were not active anymore there was no venue to good venues to host them and it was really dead so we haven't seen a band for like a year in lebanon right so rudy and i were okay let's do this you know so bit by bit we start changing members and getting people who knew actually what they were doing and stuff like that and we uh, started doing our own thing you know our own songs i have written some lyrics and stuff like that and this is how it started uh, our first gig it was a um, it was called Christmas Mission, and it was um, a fundraiser for uh, SOS children, right. uh, children orphans. So uh, we played that gig. Uh, it was, I think, December 20th of 2014. So um, the, the lady who organizes this gig, uh, her name is Natalie. Uh, she was cool enough to let us play. It was our first gig, and we played along with uh, maybe 30 or something bands. It was two day, a uh, two day concert. Right. And this is how we got on stage for the first time. Remember we played two originals. It was from Once and For All, this album. It was uh, Call for Bloodshed, Electrified, and then we played For Whom the Bell Tops from Metallic. I think every band starts up with this song. <laughs> they all cover it. So yeah, this is this was our first gig. Right. <clears throat> I, I I I I saw this one one another uh, interview of you guys, and then I I I heard that you and Rudy like you started like creating songs like when you were like nine, ten, eleven, right? That like in those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we started uh, music when we were. We started go getting into music at this age. Right. I was about 14 when we started doing that, 15. He was 11. He was 10 or 11 at this point. But he was much more experienced than I because he really took lessons with, you know, with teachers and he already got into the thing, you know. So uh, he was driving me more than I was driving him back then. Right. So how did the current lineup that you have, uh, how did everybody got together? Okay, so uh, first Danny was with us since we were in a band called Backlash. That was before Fanami, the band we did with another vocalist and another bassist, it was right. called Backlash. And then when we got our first original vocalist and we, as Fanami, uh, his name was Adil, and uh, this is when it really the first lineup came up. But then, you know, there are musical differences. You know, sometimes uh, someone's technique doesn't work with yours. Right. And uh, yeah, so we really started searching for people who really wanted to play this exact same of music, but the skills to play this kind of music. And uh, yeah, this is how it started. Uh, I think Sam. Uh, our vocalist was, was uh, the third uh, one who joined the band, the current lineup. Right. And um, yeah, he joined around December, December 2015, I think. He, he came and played with us one gig. He played a tribute for Dimebag. Uh, it was in this river. Right. And uh, he nailed it. I mean, it, this guy can saying anything so we were like yeah this is gonna work and we had the same you know influences uh his favorite bands were pantera or stu um so we had the same you know we we are both big fans of uh characters like sub-zero batman we, we had really 
a similar taste. So uh, it really clicked. And since then, Sam was with us. And in the end, the bass player, uh, Peter, he joined because Rudy was asked to play with the rock band, you know, just to fill up and uh, get to help them. And he was the basis of this band. So they felt this great chemistry together. And, uh, and we were looking for a bassist after that. And he was like, you know what? Why don't you play with us? You know? And right away, as soon as he joined the band, Peter was, you know, one of the most commented people I knew. And since then, it it's, was really, we were all tied together. Right. So, yeah, this, uh, the, the current lineup came up. Right. So this, uh, I think I first listened to you. The 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 song that I first listened from you you guys is uh, "Sacrifice" from your 2018 album uh, "TWO," right? So can you tell me a little bit about this album? What does "TWO" mean? So what it stands for? <laughs> yeah. So basically, the 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 album all and all was really influenced by tribalism and ethnic influences because. Rudy and I have some African backgrounds, and uh, we love, uh, you know, tribal instruments. We love to listen to uh, traditional music and stuff like that. So um, uh, this album came about. I think we started writing it. It was already we already started writing it while we were recording once and for all. So we already had songs, you know, ready for the next album. Right. So um, yeah, I think. Uh, it was really influenced by what we like to listen to, you know, Metallica, uh, Pantera, Testament, uh, Exodus, you know, old school thrash metal mainly. And we added to that, you know, the melodies, the tribal music and stuff like that. So Sacrifice, uh, I think until today, uh, from the two albums that we released, I think it's my favorite. And, uh, it's the one I, I really worked on lyric wise, uh, melody wise and uh, riff wise. So yeah, I think it's one of my favorites right now. Right. And uh, yeah, as I said, the whole album is a mixture of influences and, uh, and you know, ethnic and tribal stuff. Right. So I I understand that you you uh, in your in the in the band uh, you mostly write the lyrics right so you actually so what's the process it do you write the lyrics first or you write the music first what's the what how uh, yeah I always I was uh, I always write the music for the album first you know the whole songs yeah. and then we decide so so guys what what do we want to talk about we want to go this way or this way. So back then, it was really about, you know, really social, uh, social issues and stuff that we faced in country. And we imitated that in a way that it was, you know, we found it cool in lyrics. For example, Sacrifice, the lyrics basically uh, about uh, manipulation and uh, tyranny, basically, and uh, how everyone is dying for a cause that never happens and uh, yeah so and it was really influenced by way by the way by uh, the movie Lincoln uh, the movie Lincoln you know Lincoln he mm. did this uh, amendment to save black people and make them free and uh, this is what it's all about you know, you know how much do we have to sacrifice before we can finally be free and, uh, and you know get what we deserve so right. yeah so so growing up like a place like lebanon how is the attitude towards like metal heads in in, in your country you know the usuals uh satanic uh <laughs> <laughs> dark and evil people but you know it got much better with time uh today you can walk on the street with a metal t-shirt can go to places you can get your your hair and uh, piercing and stuff like that uh, mm -hmm. 15 years ago 10 years ago it was really harder you know you'd walk on the streets and people would look at you like you're satan himself it was really weird uh and you know because it, 
it is a religious country. Religion has a lot to do with uh, political stuff. So, for example, we had Sepultura coming to Lebanon and they got banned for right. no reason. They just assumed that they were satanic or whatever and they just got banned because of that. So, yeah, it, it's really bad politically, but as uh, from a people point of view, no, it's really got much better. People are accepting it. They they understand that it's just a form of, or of art like any other. So it's getting better with time. Right. Um, is is there any any bands that actually played in Lebanon, uh, like international bands? Yeah, of course, there were many bands who came. Uh, there was Grave, uh, Septic Flash. Right. Uh, we had uh, Decapitated, Destruction, uh, who else? Hail. I don't know if you remember the super group Hail. Right. It was made of uh, members from big bands like, uh, I, I think the one I saw, it was uh, Tim Ripper Owens on vocals. Right. There was, um, I think it was Lomenzo on the bass. Uh, yeah, Phil Demel on the, I can't remember well who it was, but yeah, it was super cool to have them in the bottom too. And, uh, you know, there was bigger concerts, you know, Evan Evanescence came, Anathema came, uh, Apocalyptica came. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we had uh, a good bunch of bands who performed here. Right. So I know that you're like, you, your, your main band that you really like is Metallica, right? So were you able to see Metallica live? Yeah. Uh, Rudy and I went just before, before Infanomy, went to Turkey and saw them. Right. Um, we saw them in a, in a university stadium. It was so weird because, you know, it was, there was no beer. You know, it was a Turkish uh, <laughs> a school stadium. Right. And, uh, yeah, we had to watch these guys with a bunch of Coca-Colas, so... It was uh, it was back then. It was Metallica by request, so fans would choose which which songs they they would play. Right. And yeah, it was you know, it was godlike to see them live. I remember also we were standing in a point in the stadium because it was a university stadium, so uh, the mixing uh, console was put in the middle of the field because you know Big Nick had to see Metallica. So right. we're standing right next to Big Nick. <laughs> and it was super cool and we would look at them and and he would look you know he was chilling with his cigarette and looking at us and you know <laughs> thumbing up for <laughs> seeing us how we were enjoying it and uh, it was super cool <clears throat> so how did you get into like i you, you said you listen to seek and destroy so uh what uh how did you get into Metallica? Because for, for me, I actually first listened, I got, I first listened to Lord actually. I load, I listened to Lord, Reload, and then I went and listened to Kill em All, Master of Puppets. I didn't, I didn't start with like Master of Puppets. I actually started with yeah. Lord, Lord because they had like so many great videos on TV, right? For Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lord you, had the memory remains uh, until it sleeps. Yeah. King Nothing, oh, this, I don't remember if it was Load or Reload, but uh, Load, these two Load. albums are great music. Yeah, Until, yeah. It, Until It Sleeps, King Nothing, those were like yeah. amazing videos, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, Sick and Destroy, it started for me, as I said, it was a Sting's theme song for a year, I think, in WCW, and I heard it on MTV while Metallica was playing it. But after that, I think I, I stuck to the Black album for a while. Right. You know, it was for for my musical taste back then. It was the easiest to listen to. You know, it was uh, more formal, more uh, catchy. I think my first Metallica hook song. I think it was um, "Holier Than Thou." I think mm. you know, it was the da 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 da. So I think that was my first uh, the first song I used to listen to daily. Um, but yeah, this is for me, Seek and Destroy was the first song and then came Unforgiven, of course, uh, Holier Than Thou and 
today my favorite song of all time is Blackened right. uh, from Injustice. And Injustice and Justice for All is my favorite album ever. I'm sorry for the bass, but yeah, it's, it is for as uh, composition wise and uh, melody wise and everything. Uh, it is my favorite album of all time. Right. How about the Hardwired album? Did you like it? Yeah, definitely. I, I love all Metallica albums, including Saint Anger. I don't know. I can't right. even understand why people hate on that one. I love this album. Right. <laughs> I think it's original in this way, and I wouldn't even change the snare sound because people try to mimic it with a better snare sound, and it sounded really bad. I think this snare sound is what made the album unique. So yeah, I love that album too. And Hardwired, when it came out, um, I was really, really waiting for you know mm. the disc, disc two because first they released uh, these music clips, Martin to Flame, Hardwired, and right. uh, Halo on Fire, I think. And when I heard the part and spit out the bone, the, the vocal melody part in the middle, in the bridge, uh, I really felt that they are still creative as much as they were in Master of Hobbits, you know. This right. part is really huge to me. And uh, I remember I was in a trip in Belgium and I used to listen to it day and night, day and night. But, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, because I, I, I actually saw them on that tour. That was my first time. I saw them in 2017 uh, on the Hardwired tour because uh, that really, I, I mean, it really ignited my interest again, in, you know, in metal. I, I was listening yeah. to metal, but it was really got me excited. It, it had uh, both, you know, like Master and Puppets, Kill em All vibe, plus it had also the Lord Reload uh, sort of, uh, I, I feel that it's like a bridging between those two sort of styles. So I really yeah. like the Hardwired. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, I think I think they always tend to, I mean, after Death Magnetic, from Death Mag Magnetic, and you know, they tended to get back to this thrash metal roots. But it really sounds unique because it's not just thrash metal. It's you know, it's Metallica. It right. really sounds like Metallica, and it's unique in its way. Right. So uh, I know that you d you have a video. We even played it before we start this interview. You you did a Memory Remains cover. So, how did you decide that you will cover Memory Remains? Because there's so many Metallica songs, right? So, how did you settle on yeah. that? <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, we were rehearsing one day, and uh, we have a song called Ceiling Fate, and it ends with this, you know, breakdown, the slow breakdown. Hmm. And I don't know who was playing, uh, I think someone was playing it on guitar. The, the breakdown, I think. I think it was that it was Sam who took my guitar and he was playing it or something like that. And then when the riff was going, you know, and then I decided to play. I don't know what, what came into my mind and I played this melody with it, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, this is just because of that breakdown I decided to do this whole song. And we said, if we want to cover anything for Metallica, it shouldn't be, you know, something really cliche like Master of Puppets or, you know, these songs were over covered. Mm. So uh, we thought it was unique. It sounded unique for us. And uh, adding that to the song would, you know, make, make it a good cover, you know, just if you want to listen to a, another version of The Memory Remains, you have this one. And then it got bigger because uh, we said, uh, why don't we make a music clip about it? Because the lyrics really, we could relate to the lyrics and uh, it's not Metallica used it to to transfigure, you know, fame and uh, how it gets to you. It's a bit like what it took play. But for us, the memory remains, we took it more about, uh, you know, uh, everything will will stay, the memories will always stay along with time. So we took right. it in our way and we explain it our way. And this is what's cool about it for us, that we could take a song and show that in the same lyrics, in the same music, you can take it to a completely other direction. And uh, it's all about how the, the, the fans see it. 
mm. not just about how the artists want to showcase it. Yeah, <clears throat> because that's a that's a like I mean the lyrics of that song is really amazing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a bit. It's not the usual metal lyrics, you know. It's right. really, yeah. If if you just read the lyrics, you could say it was a pop or whatever radio. Uh, song, but uh, I think it suited well the song and the theme they were using. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Right. <clears throat> I saw this one of your live performances. Uh, of course, your vocalist is like a beast, right? When he performs, like he he's so strong on like his persona, and when he's performing, is very very strong. Um, one of the songs that I liked, there was a live performance of Dance of the Wounded Souls. Uh, where you had like a percussions as well on on stage. Do you remember that performance? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, as I said, we were really into this ethnic tribal uh, kind of music, and uh, mainly Godsmack and Soli Erna stuff. You know, the stuff Soli Erna did by himself, the acoustic with tribal instruments. I really love this thing, and I. And I think Sepultura did it also, uh, adding tribal percussions yeah. in, in their music. So we saw that suited well, the, the thing. And we always try to, whenever we can, do something special. Like, because if people are going to go and listen to what they can already hear on the album, then it wouldn't be special in, in a way. But uh, doing something, you know, as a show-wise, you know, adding percussions. I don't know if you saw also the voodoos uh, we used to use in the, in the stage. Right. So adding all that was really interesting to people. And, uh, and yeah, we enjoyed it. It was really cool. Right. <clears throat> so Loic, because this is a Halloween episode, so I, I want to ask you a few questions about Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> like, I really fit in that section. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if if you if you choose like what what would you be your like favorite Halloween movie? My favorite Halloween movie. Okay, so I love Halloween. You know the one from uh, Rob Zombie, right? Uh, with uh, the new Michael Myers. Uh, I don't know if it's considered as Halloween movies, but for me it is. I love the Saw series. All of them. I love oh, every, yes. every movie they do. That's an amazing series, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love old school stuff, you know, the Bride of Frankenstein, uh, Tim Burton stuff. You know, I, I love this theme, so uh, I can name 100 movies right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Halloween and Saw would be my first, my first choice. Right. How about Jason Voorhees? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love the character, but I don't think they ever gave him justice in any movie. You know, right. I, yeah, I think they were all really low budget and they never took the character and gave him justice. So I hope maybe someday someone <laughs> would do that. Yeah, actually, for, for me, I, I actually, you, you mentioned that also the, the Saw series was really great series for me. I watch all the movies. <laughs> and it's so clever and it's, you know, seven movies. I, I remember we, we were watching it all, you know, uh, we, we watch a movie a day. So it was right. Saw 1, Saw 2. So. And you, you, can, you can never get tired of this. There, there's always new ideas. It's always surprising. It's always blood twists and all that. It's so clever. And yeah, I, I love this movie. I don't like the the horror movies that just want to show you know gore and, uh, right. and blood and stuff like that. I love the clever stuff. The, the, yeah, the because stuff that the, makes you. The thing it saw was that it it was because the guy was not really killing anybody, right? Because he he yeah, manipulates exactly. the people, but people actually does it, right? So it's exactly. <laughs> he's not really doing it. <laughs> yeah, he, he never killed anyone. <laughs> Right. You just wanted to play games, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I love this series. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, 
what about music wise if you are if you want to listen for like if uh, halloween music what sort of music videos or music would you would you remember uh i think i'd go for ramzabi first mm. he's i think he's the king of yeah he lives halloween every day right and i love i love this style uh rob zombie uh i just to maybe uh john 5 john 5 music is really trippy and you know yeah. halloween i don't know for me halloween is not uh, a really dark themed uh, event i think it's also joyful in a way dark darkly it's joyful so yeah uh i'd go for these ones maybe i'd listen to halloween the band because it's been a while <laughs> I, i have yeah. listened to them <laughs> yeah uh especially the song itself halloween so yeah uh of course i'd go back to listening to in flames metallica <laughs> you know anything that's that would give me the punch for the day right so, yeah I think I think for me if I have to use like watch like one music video I would I would choose Thriller actually Michael Jackson because it's yeah. uh, it's a very classic <laughs> Yeah yeah of course yeah this is what I mean I think Halloween it has a groovy a feel into it Right Yeah Michael Jackson would be would be a great choice too Yeah <clears throat> uh we we talk about the metallica cover but you guys you guys have a video of another great song you you covered the 9 inch nails hurt and yes. uh, this is where i i see that uh, that uh, basam is actually i i can i can see that he's a pantera fan because he's singing in front of a pantera flag right <laughs> yeah actually it is uh right here in my studio uh you can see it here I don't know if you can see it now. Oh okay, right. That's the place, yeah. 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 So uh it was recorded here. So but yeah, he is definitely is uh even if you hear in the end the grunge the harsh part, he has that kind of timbre that goes really harsh and right. Yeah. So we're all super fans of Pantera. So uh, why how why you choose the 9 inch nail song was it influenced by this johnny cash cover or you guys did it before <laughs> uh yeah i think it's much more a johnny cover uh, johnny cash cover right. because it sounds a bit more like johnny cash but in the end the original artist is 9 inch nail so uh yeah and not a lot of people knew that and we received message like man this is johnny cash and Right. and just make sure of that uh it was in quarantine we were all in quarantine and we wanted to do uh, something you know mm-hmm. we had to, to to stay creative and we don't want to waste any new material you know because the video would be you know everyone in his home and stuff like that mm. so uh hurt came about because i think it was depression hitting us all and uh, it really fitted our mood back then yeah and uh, i love this song i love listening to johnny cash um uh, and uh, yeah i think doing a version of that scene seemed uh cool for me and i arranged it our way you know the fanami style with the solo and everything right and the breakdown at the end and um, you know this is how it came about it it really took a day to do the whole thing it was just a fast idea hey do you guys want to do it yeah yeah so we just did it and uh, put it out yeah <clears throat> because i i remember there was an article that uh, actually trent resner of 9 inch nail said that when johnny cash released that song that song actually became johnny cash song it it's no longer 9 inch nail song because nobody exactly <laughs> yeah uh sing i think even it's more uh epic because i think it was the last yes. uh johnny cash song and him covering a younger band's music you know for me it was i w- i would put myself in in his place and see you know johnny cash is playing my music i I've, i've done it you know <laughs> this is all you can ask for 
Right. And yeah, definitely. And I think Metallica did the same with all their covers. You know, every cover they took, they made it and it became a Metallica song. Yeah. Few people know that Am I Evil isn't actually a Metallica song. Uh, turn the page. <laughs> all these cool songs. So yeah. yeah. Sometimes an artist can really. Yeah, whiskey in a whiskey in a jar. I also right whiskey in a jar was also cover. Right? <laughs> whiskey in the jar was a traditional folk song that Tim Lizzy took and made it uh, as a rock song and then Metallica yeah. made it their version. Yeah. Uh, yes, the turn the page is Metallica turn the page was, I think one of my favorite Metallica songs, especially the music video. Have you seen the music video turn the page? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's really emotional, I think. Right. And it was, it, I think it was the song that the people choose when we were, we were watching them, Metallica by request. Right. It was this song. It was turn the page, and. Uh, by the way, you mentioned that you saw them in 2017, and two days ago you sent me a catalog of shows you've seen live right. since 2000. I don't know, it's like a hundred plus shows you've seen, all of these bands, local and huge band. Uh, I think this is awesome, and kudos for that, for this dedication to see live music. Yeah, so because uh, uh, I started going to concerts in year 2000, and then, uh, so 2020, I completed the 20 years. Luckily, I was able to complete it before, you know, the before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. But uh, lucky you. <laughs> I mean, it's all about because for me, I, I I grew up in Sri Lanka where we didn't even have like you know we never saw a live band till I was like 20 years old because there was a no, there were no bands really. And there were no ways to get music and all this. It's it's really hard, you know. We just watch like a couple of music videos, the same music videos every day on TV. So I remember those days. So I my idea was that if I if I would make make uh, something out of me, I would go and watch all these bands that I want to see. So that's what I've been doing for the last twenty years. I try to go concert uh, as much as possible. If they're coming nearby country, I will go and watch them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for us, the thing about the pandemic is that we had four big festivals right. that we wanted to sign up for and we were really excited. It was, you know, the, the first year to really go to, you know, big festivals because before that we toured ourselves, we paid for our, to play shows abroad, we, you know, we did everything we could to, to, to be at this stage as a band right and uh since last year i think we really started to to get the audience attention and stuff like that and this year was supposed to be a huge year for us and it's sad that it ended this way right. but yeah we're all waiting for the pandemic to be over so we can i hope we can get back at it as it was before because this is not sure I think. yeah so you you guys won the Wacken uh, Metal Battle that that was in 2018, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So and then you you were able to go and play in Wacken Open Air, right? Yeah, definitely. So can you yeah, tell me a little bit it, about that experience playing in Wacken? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, the the battle happened in Lebanon and. Uh, there was uh, other cool four other bands that played with us. And um, we were lucky enough to win and uh, get to, you know, I think Vakan is the biggest metal festival in the world. Right. And uh, we already played a few festivals. Uh, we played, you know, the Turkish festival was the first festival we played. And then we played Romania, which was a metalhead meeting festival with the mm. children of Bodham, Epica, and all these guys. And then we got to play back. And it was on uh, the Headbangers Ball stage. Um, man, you know, it was the first time we played in such a huge crowd. It was like, I don't know, it was 10K or more. You know, it, we couldn't see the end of it. Right. It was really intimidating at first, but uh, Right away, you know, when you know you are playing back and you have to give everything you have. And it was, yeah, I think it was one of the biggest experiences. I have even in the backstage and stuff like that. 
just meeting all these great artists, you know, that you would never dream to meet when we were kids playing in the backyard, you know. Right. So, yeah, it was awesome. It was, yeah, it's vacant, man. You cannot say anything bad about it. Right. It's <laughs> That would be an amazing experience, right? <laughs> Definitely. And the funny thing is that you know, Lebanon is always, always tough with visas and stuff like that. So uh, the funny story about that is that we got the visa. Sam got his visas the day of the gig. So it was like just 18 hours or 20 hours just before the gig. Wow. So, so he got the visa. We got tickets. And there was no, no planes to Hamburg back then. So mm. We had to fly to France. And from France to take a train to Hamburg and from Hamburg. So we passed like six countries before arriving to Wacken. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was really tough, but it was worth it. Definitely, it was, it was worth it. Man. Right. So when you guys performed in Wacken, uh, how was the response of the cloud, crowd? Uh, we have a video on YouTube. Uh, we played the song called The Day of Reckoning. This, this song was supposed to be just a live song. We, we never wanted to release it in any album, but then we recorded it because people were asking for it. Uh, so there's this song and you can see uh, it's vacant. So uh, the thing is in this stage, this particular stage, marsh pits were not allowed mm. uh, because I don't really know the reason, but they were telling us don't engage a marsh pit, don't engage any will of death. You just have to perform that there and and uh, never mention the much. So uh, what we got after that was really surprising. Even the owner of Vacan, Thomas Jansen, super awesome guy. Uh, he really praised us and said it was really cool. And uh, yeah, I think it was really good uh, reaction. We had we had some technical issues before we started. My guitar broke in the plane so you know at Vacan you can't carry your instruments with you you have to give it away to uh, to a storage room so I didn't see my guitar until we got on stage and when we got on stage I was you know playing and there was no sound coming out of it and I they just got me another guitar from another band and we started right away so all that was a bit intimidating but when it started we directly clicked to it it was People loved it, and it was great. We even had people from Lebanon following us to the to, to Vakan. Wow! And it was, nice. uh, yeah, the first thing I could see in the in the arena was a Lebanese flag, so I was always eye spotting it, you know, just to <laughs> stay in contact with my peers from Lebanon and not get right. intimidated by this whole crowd. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, remember, we you posted the. Before doing this podcast, you 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 posted uh, people to send their questions. So there was one question that there, somebody asked: Is 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 metal genre dying, or is it a dying genre? Metal. What do you think? I don't think so. Uh, I think metal survived all kinds of uh, trends. It survived grunge. It survived uh, pop. It survived all these. Uh, trends that keep on growing and growing but I think because it is a culture it's not just a music genre right you know there's no there's no uh, type of music there's all these kinds of sub genres you know you can black metal is all about you know a specific kind of thing thrash metal right. is something different that so every kind of metal has its own culture and people who follow this music has a they have a way of life that fits this kind of music. So I think it will stay this way because everyone can relate to, to metal music, especially in these days. Metal music actually reflects what's real, the, the, the reality we live in. We, after all, we live in a dark world, right? right? So I don't think a pop music talking about, I don't know, love or boyfriends and girlfriends and all this kind of shit can uh, so yeah 
Right. Uh, I, I think I think no metal is will survive anything because it's true and people can uh, you know react to it in our way. Right. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, when this pandemic started uh, happening, what I realized after like a couple of weeks is that uh, it's we it, for me it's it's I'm able to survive this pandemic mainly because of music because I have music yeah. at home. Yeah. I'm able to do things with music, yeah. and even the re even the reason I started the podcast is because of uh, because of the pandemic. I actually started this podcast. Because as I said, I was going to so many concerts and everything got cancelled because yeah. I was supposed to watch Slipknot, I was supposed to watch Iron Maiden this year. Everything got cancelled. So, you know, I thought, oh, oh, maybe let's just do something uh, <laughs> while, you know, I can yeah. attend to the shows. <laughs> uh, man, yeah, this, this, this thing has changed the world in so many ways. And, uh, yeah, I think Every time uh, any metalhead or anyone can listen to to metal music, they can relate re relate directly. Uh, even you know, I try. I learned that from my own parents. You know, they never got in touch with such type of music. Mm. The only reason maybe they can't hear it, I think, because of the streaming and the growing, it's something that is not familiar to their ears. But if they listen to the melodies the uh, structure of music. After all, I think it's classical music with distortion, basically. I think this is right, right, what right. metal music is. Yeah, yeah. So, they, yeah. <laughs> when, it's just when about, you... I think, yeah, they cannot maybe uh, feel the, you know, fast beats or the screaming and all that, but anyone can really relate to this music, I think, if they give it, give it time and give time to understand what it is. Right. <clears throat> So, like uh, this pandemic, what uh, what did you like learn from the pandemic? Uh, you know, I, there's a lot of positive stuff that happened during. Although it wasn't great, but I learned to realign. You know, reboot. You know, restructure my life because I've been working, uh, having a daily job for a long time. Uh, I've been working since I was in school, so um, I really learned to, you know, spend time at home, uh, do stuff that I would like to do during the day, you know, uh, learn stuff that, that I didn't have time to learn, mm. uh, to get to practice more. Yeah, so uh, even because I do everything that has to do uh, with the, the band's management, even that, I, I got really better at it because, you know, I had time to really sit down and reflect on it and reflect on the music industry. And I saw how it collapsed because of just shows uh, getting canceled and everything went to, you know, social media. And so, yeah, I really got the time to learn more about that, learn more about what I would like to do personally, because, you know, when you do something for a long time, it just gets as a routine and then it just become normal to you right and until you really take a time to see it from a wide angle it's just gonna keep happening every day so yeah this is what happened to me and uh, now i see a lot of stuff in a different way mm. and uh, i think i learned a lot from it really yeah <clears throat> yeah and i was thinking that uh uh, this really helps me the importance because I, ultimately you just have your family with you, right? And and your peace of mind that is the most important thing. Uh, all the other things, you know, it's there, but you know you can live without, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, also, spending time with my parents because, as I said, I used to work a lot, you know, day and night. Right. I never really got the time to really spend time with them, and uh, yeah, it was it, it was really needed. Um, right. Honestly, it was really needed <laughs> at some point. I I think even later on, if nothing happens, I think 
I always take time to, you know, back down a bit and just, you know, do human stuff, you know, not because it's always about the band and work. And then you get back home and you have stuff to do. And then you wake up, you go to work. And there's always this band stuff happening in my head. So I never really took time to see other things, you know, family, uh, friends, uh, just, you know, live and uh, watch TV shows and all these kind of stuff. Right. I don't know why today my black cat is being very annoying. So <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> because maybe it's because it's Halloween, right? So. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's hyped up today. So <laughs> say hi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, Loic, I know that... Uh, you you uh, you play solar guitars, right? So, uh, when did that relationship started? So, how long you been playing solar guitars? Uh, I've been playing it since March. Um, you know what? When I work for stuff for the band, I always think what can make the band better. How can we upgrade as a band? What can make us better? And you know, endorsement is a big step up to be recognized as an artist, you know. Right. So um, uh, I was really, Rudy got the Bosphorus deal before that. And I was really searching for a brand that would, you know, suit me and that I could rely on so I can use, uh, you know, like all artists do. And uh, I was emailing all these brands. I got some replies, but, you know, some of them asked for a lot of money. Some of them were you know, you have to be on a bigger stage if you want to get endorsed with us. Uh, in the end, someone recommended me to Solar Guitars. Right. And they got in contact with me. And the whole thing happened in really three hours. Uh, yeah. I received the mail and was like, yeah, are you interested? I was like, of course. You know, Ola England, I think, is one of the biggest personalities now in music, in metal, in this, in the metal industry. And uh, because, as I said, now social media is king, so everything has to do with it. And mm -hmm. I was super hyped about it. And uh, just the problem was just that the model I wanted wasn't available available back then. So I had to wait until March so, th so they can send it to Belgium. And I got that. I got it from there. Right. And since then, yeah, it's, I think I've played before BC Rich. I played Jackson. I played ESP guitars. Uh, for me, till today, this is the best guitar I've ever played. Uh, the hardware is awesome. Mm. Uh, it sounds super cool because it has a custom pickup, so it's redesigned really of how you want to sound. And uh, it's it's a it looks like a typical metal guitar, but it really fits in a lot of styles. Right. Uh, it's really surprising and. With the price cost they're selling it to the people, I think it's, I really recommend it to, to anyone who really wants, has a budget and wants to get a really super cool guitar. Uh, I think go for, for this one. Right. And, uh, yeah. This is it, man. This is. Wow. Cool. My solar. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And they are always adding up new. Uh, models and they just added up now bass guitars so yeah right. i think it's uh it's really getting uh, big for the solar guitars yeah because i i actually had a guest uh earlier in the earlier in this series uh one of the philippine artists who was who is also in uh, solar guitars endorser and then uh, we we were actually planning to uh, invite Ola England to actually join the podcast. <laughs> yeah, you told me about that. Yeah. <laughs> wish wish he could be here uh, chatting with us right now. Yeah, because he he himself is is amazing guitarist, right? <laughs> yeah, and by the way, he's a super cool, down to earth guy, and uh, people in his stages. Being that friendly with everyone, I think it's awesome. And uh, his wife, Louise, also is, uh, they are super friendly. They are awesome to work with. Right. They are awesome people. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool to be a part of this group, really. 
like there was one more funny question somebody asked is that uh, what do you use on your hair <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know man anything that i i am not a super you know take care of yourself guy but you know the usual curl conditioners and shampoo right whenever i i shower once a year <laughs> uh you the reason i like contacted you there was one reason that i like wanted to reach out to you guys mainly because i saw the latest the music video the mute the deaf and the blind which was like amazing so that's the reason i really wanted to reach out to you guys and say i want to talk to you so can you tell me that what's the inspiration for that song i mean it's it was an amazing song yeah um you know after doing these two albums we thought it was there was a lot of influences in that in these two albums so we decided to you know uh do something that would be really us you know define our sound define our music so uh after two uh T W O second album. We decided, you know, to find another tuning, find another sound for us, and uh, we went for another tuning, and we started writing sounds according to that. And we went for a much more modern type of feel. Right. And um, this song, the mute, the deaf, the blind, it's all about, you know, everything we see every day in Lebanon. You know, the situation is getting worse every day, and still. The people are sitting in their home, not doing anything. Uh, people are lo- losing their jobs. Uh, there's hunger, uh, famine. Yeah, it's it's really getting tough, and still everyone is sitting and watching. It's been happening for so many years. You know, elections happen, and still they always choose the same people over and over again uh, because of the tyranny or kind of dictatorship that we have. Right. So uh, it has a lot to do with that, and you know uh, the ideology: see no evil, hear no evil. You know, so if you if you really see something bad, and uh, you you keep doing it, you in the end end up being like that. So um, it is. It has a lot about to you know wake up people. You can't you see what's around you? You know, so. Uh, Yeah, it's it's mainly a wake up call. It's really personal because when I wrote that, I was in Seattle uh, visiting a friend. Mm. It was super cool for from him. He invited me to see the last show of Slayer in Seattle. That was Lamb of God, Testament, Anthrax, Name mm. on Death. So I was sitting in in a room in in his in his house, and the lyrics came along because I was seeing how life was. Uh, abroad from Lebanon, you know everything is easier, uh, and yeah, it's it's so it has a lot to do with the current situation and how people are reacting to to the bad things that are happening in Lebanon. So yeah, this is what the music of the band is all about. Yeah, <clears throat> because uh, that song, uh, I think even in the video, you you guys were you guys were. sort of putting out a message there that uh, i mean about suicide and about drug abuse i think in the in the pandemic one thing that's like actually uh, heightened is like lot of there's a lot of suicide a lot of drug abuse as well right because there's people are now just stuck at their homes um, so it's it's probably it's uh, i mean it's a sad situation but that's the reality right yeah uh, we had many many uh suicide uh here in Lebanon uh a lot of people commit suicide because you know they lost hope all these years they've been building and building themselves and now you can't even get your own mo- your own money the money that you worked hard mm. so so hard for it you can't even use it now uh so a lot of people lost hope and uh, this music clip is as i said the current situation can't you see what's around can't you see why are you still silent why why aren't you doing anything about it so and even when they do they do it in a way that i don't know if you heard about all this 
a revolution kind of thing. You would go to, to the um, revolution or whatever it was, and you would see people dancing and putting out music. So for me personally, I think it, this is now how it goes, you know, abroad when a revolution happens, uh, mm -hmm. people get killed, blood is spilled, but in the end, the, the people is always the majority of, <laughs> of, of the country. So uh, yeah, it's sad to see it this way. And yeah, we, we've heard about a lot of, if not people dying, there's a lot of attempts of suicide and people getting depressed. We could feel it too, you know, uh, yeah. people lost their jobs, people were staying at home and stuff like that. So we, we really felt down too. So uh, I think everyone at this time is feeling this way and uh, suicide and the virus. We also mentioned a scene about the virus and the puppet scene where, you know, this girl is being manipulated by someone who really doesn't care, you know, whatever happens to her is just enjoying seeing her uh, being manipulated and uh, yeah. getting yeah so yeah the music clips really re involve all these uh, situations that we live daily here in Lebanon and I, I'm sure it happens everywhere in the world yes <clears throat> so this uh, this song is the so what's that what about the new album so when it's your prime plan to put it out so it was scheduled to be released <laughs> this august but you know the pandemic happened and uh we were supposed to release the album through a pr agency you know just to spread the word with uh, magazines and reviews and you know, just to get the word out. Right. So since our, all our money were locked in our bank accounts, we couldn't use them, so we couldn't transfer money abroad. So we, we couldn't do it this year. So we, are, we will work on a way so we can try and do it as soon as possible. But we released the music, the death of the because we really, really needed to, you know, uh, present the new image of Fanami, uh, start fresh with, some, with the new tone, the new, uh, People were were really waiting for this new one, so we put it out, and we're gonna. I think we're gonna put uh, out uh, another two singles before the whole album is out, because we need time to, you know, uh, find a way to make these money transfers and uh, give justice to this album, because it has really, really cool and dark uh, and fresh ideas. So we can't wait for that, but also we, we, we need to, to make it the right way. We don't want to waste it uh, and release it uh, in a bad way. So, yeah, this is what we're waiting for. I hope, I really hope that by March we would have released these singles and uh, we can think of releasing the whole album in this time, this right. time and period. <clears throat> uh, any, any singles in the pipeline for... Yeah, we have, we're, we're going to release two other singles. Um, and uh, also, I don't know when it's going to happen because you don't know what happens every day in Lebanon. Right. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it's not, not going to be a long time to, in these couple of months. Right. <clears throat> um, so... I want to ask you, I mean, of course, if the pandemic is not there, I would ask you, like, you know, what's your, what's your next tour and when, where, you, where you're supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. is there any, any, any talk about, you said that there were four festivals that you got cancelled or got uh, because of the pandemic, but is there anything planned for, like, 2021 or 2022? You know, uh, promoters... They all they they all seem um, not positive about 2021. Right. They really think that it will also be postponed to 2022. But if if somehow things get better, I don't know if they find a vaccine or <laughs> some kind of miracle happens to this. Right. Yeah, I think the same the same uh, stuff we were booking uh, will happen in 2021. So. 
we're not worried about the, the festivals, we're just worried about the situation when uh, things will start to get back and active. Yeah. I mean, I hope that, you know, things get better and you guys can maybe play here, you know, in, in Southeast Asia, you can come here. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we would love to, man. We actually almost got the chance to do it with Legion of the Damned right. uh, in 2018, I think also. It was around March 2018. They did the Asian tour. They were doing Singapore, Philippines, uh, all these countries. Right. And uh, we were invited to do it, but uh, we had some problems. We couldn't attend the, the, these events, but uh, we would love to, man. Of course, uh, we know how diehard these fans are, uh, especially Asian uh, people. They're really dedicated to, I think, to everything they love. They're really diehard fans. So, yeah, we can't wait to, to do a tour around your country. Right. So. Um... You mentioned you watched Slayer Farewell Tour in Seattle. So I was I was actually lucky enough to also watch them twice on the Farewell Tour because they played in Philippines twice. Uh, and uh, on the last show, I was actually able to meet them, uh, the show, the last 2019 show. What I've been thinking, a lot of, lot of people actually sort of saying this, that uh, after Slayer got disbanded, the world the world sort of went into shit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we knew that was going to happen. If Slayer stops, everything is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, because I, I keep on feeling that every time I see something that uh, one of these old photos and stuff, the, how it was and now uh, shit, I, I don't yeah. even have to change my shirt because I'm just staying at home like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, seeing seeing them, uh, especially Tom Araya. Uh, Tom Araya has a lot of influence to me as a person and as a character, right. as much as a frontman and a bit and a bass player. Uh, just you know, him waving goodbye and stuff like that was really uh, emotional uh, because I know he he. He waited for this for a long time. He had, you know, neck problems, and uh, right. so I think it was the the they end, they ended right. You know, they didn't. You know, I think Scorpion, for example, they did many many last tours. Uh, <laughs> right, right. All these guys, you know, they always come out. This is our last tour, and then they come back. But ending it this way, with you know, staying true to their music for so long with great albums and all that. And ending this way, I think, is the best way you can add. If you can't do it as it should uh, happen, then mm. you'd rather call it a day, I think. And this is what's great about, for me, about uh, a band like Metallica or Aerosmith. Uh, these bands have been playing for like <laughs> 30 plus years. Right. And they still perform as, as if they were young. And I think even Metallica, they spent, some, I don't know, five, ten years where they were, you know, the vocals were getting tired and uh, they weren't at their 100%. And then coming back from that and getting even better at it. I think James Lethgate's vocals right now are better than, <laughs> than ever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I really think it's really cool. As long as they can do it the proper way, then yeah, why not? Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, uh, there was the one more question that somebody asked about. <laughs> I don't know how it's related to Phenomi. Man, uh, I'm so. <laughs> these guys on my feed, man. <laughs> they are the best people uh, ever. I see. Yeah, so the question was why the pizza, which is uh, round or circle, why is it in a square box, not on a circle box? <laughs> well,. <laughs> How can anyone answer that? But uh, it can happen. You can make a round box, whatever makes you happy, you know. Right. If that makes a difference to your day, then go for it, man. I'm sure you can find a way to do it, but it is how it is. <laughs> how, yeah. I know, I mean, you're quite active on social media, so, uh, but uh, sometimes it can be very negative as well, right? Social media, because especially now that like there's an election going on and all this. 
So how do you deal with, uh, with, with social media? You know, I, I learned uh, how to use social media in many years because I'm not really good at it. Uh, I just learned how to be active and I still try to be as active as I can be. And uh, I think sometimes social media reflects stuff because when you see a picture, you can see it in many different uh, point of views. Right. So uh, whatever you post out there, people will get it their way. And sometimes you get uh, misunderstood. And this is the bad part of it. Uh, but yeah, I try as much as I can to reflect you know, the real, uh, the reality. I, I am in the, the real me. So, uh, and doing that is, is really tough for me, you know, just to go and choose, you know, one of your photos and post it out there. It, it's really, it was really alien. Uh, it was really alien to me, you know, doing all these kind of stuff. And now that I do it for the band also, uh, you know, thinking about being active and always putting stuff for people also is, is a challenge, <laughs> a huge challenge for me. But, you know, you got to do it. These days, this is what's available and this is the only way you can. This is actually how we are doing this right now. So right. everything now revolves around mm -hmm. that. But I think it's all about one's direction. If you choose to uh, do it for a good reason, then you can. You can skip all the bad stuff and just focus on the good reasons to use it. Right. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not something I, I was ever familiar with or I would ever do if there wasn't the band. I most probably would have all, all these social <laughs> accounts if there wasn't for the band. Right. So yeah. <clears throat> so like, uh, what's your message to uh, your fans, people who supported you, your friends? Uh, actually, I'd like to, because I was in this position when I was younger, you know, when you think some things are impossible in life, like I wouldn't have never thought, you know, not in a million years that one day Rudy and I and Peter and Sam and then would be on a vacuum stage. I would have never thought that I would get endorsed by a brand. You know, all these kind of stuff that people think, yeah, just in movies, or it just, it just happens to people. But I really think if you truly are passionate about what you do and you truly believe in that, it can happen, it can be done. Uh, even though from a country like Lebanon, you know, uh, the, there's, the metal scene is very, very small. Uh, a lot of people don't even know where Lebanon is located. Uh, if you can't see bands from this country going out there and doing this, then I think anyone can do the, whatever they dream of doing. So I really uh, would like to tell people to believe in themselves and trust their passion. Just don't follow the, the flow and just do whatever life requires, you know, get a job, get married, get kids, and then stay at home. You know? Life has much more to it. You, know, you can do whatever you dream of doing. And this is the beauty of it. So yeah, this is my main concern to people. Right. <clears throat> Anybody you want to shout out to? Shout out? Uh, definitely. I'd like to uh, all our friends, fans who always supported our music. Of course, I always mention that in our comments because you know, being from a place like this and still having people, you know, believing in you and still uh, trusting that you would get there someday is, is priceless to me. So I'm very, very thankful to whoever along the years, everyone who ever helped and supported my band. Uh, thank you. And uh, of course, today is Halloween. So uh, get wild, have fun <laughs> and uh, enjoy. Right. Events. The only problem is you cannot really go out, so you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, you can get creative. You know, we always find ways to to have fun. I don't know, put some music, get some friends that you trust, put a mask, whatever it takes, but just <laughs> find a way and have fun. 
get away from this depressive and sad situation. And, uh, you know, for me, getting into costumes, you know, uh, putting out loud music, it, it would really be a mood booster. So I would really recommend get creative and do whatever it takes to, to have a good time. <clears throat> so like, uh, tell everyone uh, how they can uh, follow you on social media and how they can listen to your music. Yeah, so um, we're everywhere. YouTube, uh, if you haven't seen our latest music clip, The Mute, The Deaf, The Blind, go and see it. And uh, if you like it, don't forget to click the subscribe button because it really helps out the bands. As small as it takes, you know, just a click, you would make a huge difference for, for the band. And uh, it's a huge way to support the band. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and you can listen to our music in any platform you'd like. We are on Spotify, Amrami, uh, Deezer, iTunes, all these uh, digital platforms. And uh, yeah, it's all, you know, Fanami. Just click Fanami and you can get all our music in one click. And whichever platform they are using, they can also follow us. It would be super cool because we have a lot of cool stuff coming in a couple of months. So yeah, stay tuned and uh, follow us. <clears throat> yeah, so Loic, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you for joining this uh, podcast. This was uh, great talking to you and uh, I really like enjoy your music. Uh, so keep, keep, I, I'm looking forward to your, you know, more, more music and hopefully someday we can see you live. Um, and I also like to thank everybody who joined the Facebook, uh, Facebook live and, uh, people who submitted the questions. <laughs> we'll yeah. do something like this again, uh, in the future. Uh, so, so like, uh, all the best and, uh, happy Halloween. <laughs> Thanks to you, man. I'd like to thank you too. Uh, you're a super cool guy. I wish you the best, man. And uh, thanks for having me. Uh, happy Halloween and happy birthday again. Man. Uh, hope uh, you, you'll you just reach the best time of your life now. <laughs> I hope that the next year that follow will be no pandemic. Just go to concerts and enjoy your life, man. And, uh, of course, anytime we'll stay in touch. And uh, I'll see you soon, hopefully. Yes, so thank you. Uh, so guys, this is that is Loic El Haddad of Finomi. Go follow their music, listen to their music. Guys, thank you for joining the podcast. Uh, happy Halloween and stay metal. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.